hello and welcome back to my youtube channel for the returning subscribers welcome back for the new subscribers welcome and um i know i've been mia but i am back now and we're going to dive back in with an exciting project a patch sweater i had so much fun matching this thing up so if you recreate it please tag me at my page mary case designs and i hope you get to enjoy the process to start we're going to need um you're going to need to have your measurements from one shoulder to the other and in my outfit i made three panels three uh rectangles triangles i made three of them and i ensured that my measurements were equal to each of that so if you measurements are 16 you're going to have to divide 16 by three that is if you need them to be all equal but if it doesn't let your creativity go well and same goes from the top to the bottom remember you're going to need to leave uh, a few inches off for the rim which is what i'll be working on next remember you're going to need to do that and if you're going to be working for 22 inches you're going to say 22 inches minus the inches of the rim if it's minus five you're going to get i think 17 yeah you're going now to say 17 divide by the number of um rectangles that you're going to need i took three so it was 17 divide by three and that is what i worked with and same goes for the hands and as you can see what i did with my hands i had to instead of it being like this i thought that was boring enough instead of you know it being like that i made them like that half 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 so i thought it's it looks way cuter that way so that's what i did and you can also do that or you can just um go the old way and make it like that you know and have one full color on one side but i decided to have half of each because it's like that and then it's like that so these are some of my pieces i have all the pieces done and ready to attach which is what you're going to be seeing next now the trick here is you're going to need to play around with your colors and the trick that i used i decided to complement all my colors like this if it's a purple i complement it with another color and add something else or uh something like uh this i use the same pattern with different colors you know something like that that is what i decided to do and i thought that looks nice because the colors will be complemented well so um this is it i am going to show you how to attach and mostly i'm going to show you how to do some of the few patterns i cannot manage to show you all the patterns because the video is going to be extremely long which is what i don't want but i am going to show you some of the patterns which will be um easy to do like i'll show you how to make the coco channel pattern first things first you're going to grab your uh, hook and yarn i am using the thick yarn and a 4.5 millimeter hook because with a thick yarn that's what you can use or a five millimeter hook depending with uh, the thickness of your yarn so we first of all start by making a slip stitch and after you make a slip stitch this is going to apply to each and every patch that we make so as always we're going to work two rows at the same time so that we're able to work faster now chain Two, because for this we are making single crochet rows first after you chain two you're going to insert your hook in the very first stitch that you made insert your hook yarn over pull through you're going to have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through the first one that is going to act as the chaining row and then you're going to yarn over and pull through the other two to create your first single crochet now once you do that to get to your second one you're going to turn your work there will be two loops at the very end with those two loops that is where you're going to insert your hook in the very first one and then in the second one 
yarn over and then pull through you're going to have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through the first one to create your chaining row you're going to have two loops again on your hooks then yarn over and pull through the other two to create your second single crochet now turn your work two loops on your hook two loops um, at the side that is where you're going to insert your hook one two yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through the first one to create your chaining row and then yarn over and pull through the two to create your single crochet now this is what you're going to continue doing until you have the number of inches uh, that you need I will need five inches this way or five or five point five depending with how buggy I want my um cardigan to be if I want it a little bit more buggy I am going to take six inches so I will need to do six inches this way and then I'm going to make six to six point five inches in height and yeah that is that so what you're going to do you're going to continue to make the single crochet rows until you get uh, the inches that you need and since mine is going to be a sample I'm only going to do just um, 10 stitches and I'll meet you right back with my 10 so I have my 10 stitches and this is what we're going to be starting with we're going to call this our foundation and it's what we'll be starting with for each and every patch now for the coco chanel stitch we're going to need two different colored yarns to produce the pattern now when you get to the end um this is where we get to put the last stitch now instead of using the same same yarn because we want to, tra to transition from this yarn to this one what you're going to do is let me do that uh, now this is supposed to be the last stitch that you'll need to have uh, what I mean is if you were to do 20 stitches now you have 19 and, uh, and this is the 20th you're going to turn your work you'll have two loops at the very end insert your hook yarn over and over pull through the first stitch to make your chaining row now with the two stitches instead now of making the single crochet you're going to change and take the other yarn you'll uh, ensure that you leave um an, a, a bit longer stitch one you can use to um hide your yarn this is what you do you're going to take this side and then hold this side downwards and pull through to create your single crochet then chain one now you're going to pull the two and the other one it's up to you if you want to leave them hanging or you can hide them as you go but now once you chain one now i know that we started with just um Mm, what are they called i know that we started with just single crochets but we are going now to be alternating between single crochets and double crochets now it's up to you to decide which you want now we are going to start with a half with double crochets yarn over insert your hook in the very first stitch and i i'll be hiding this one as well as carrying the next the the first yarn all through the other side insert your hook yarn over and you put your double crochet double crochet three loops on your hook yarn over the first two and then yarn over through the other two and then a single crochet a double crochet single crochet double crochet you'll keep alternating that until you get to the end now there is just no definite way of what should start and what should end because we're just alternating so i am ending with a single crochet on this side so what i do what i did i inserted my 
hook in the very last stitch pulled through and then I have two rows two stitches or two loops on my hook now what I do is I'm not going to use the same same yarn I'm going to stop with that one and take the first yarn that we used and pull through to create the single crochet so you just pull to tighten and then yarn over and chain two to chain two to turn and then you're going to carry over this yarn or you could choose to cut if you don't have a lot of yarn you can choose to cut it and then just attach every other row you just attach but since i am showing you just a bit of a sample we are going to carry it through and you're going to see the pattern start to form within the next um row now still we're going to carry this and hide it you've changed two because we've finished with a single crochet which means you're going to start with a double crochet like i said we are alternating so you yarn over insert your hook and make your double like that so continue doing that you go a double where you where you put a double starting you're going to put a single crochet where there was a single crochet you get to put a double so i will meet you at the end now at the end on this row i started with a single crochet and i'm finishing with a half double so i have my three loops on the hook so i am going to use the same same yarn and yarn over yarn over pull through the first two now through the last two i'm going to take the other yarn the alternating yarn which is the which is what i'm going to use to pull through the last two and then i'm going to chain one turn and because i have ended with a double i'm going to start with a single so that's what you do where there's a single you put a double where there's a double you put a single and then that is just what you're going to do that is the pattern where the pattern will start forming and that's just basically it the rest is up to you you get to choose your own colors and you just get to um if it's a dark color and a bright they go best that way a, a black and a bright one or two brights uh which don't necessarily complement each other like not the same shades just a bit far and that is how you're going to get the best out of it i will show you how to do the bubble stitch so when you get to the end um no we're working on the bubble stitch you're going to chain two you're going to put your first double crochet double crochet insert your hook yarn over pull through three loops yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over pull through the next two loops now we're going to put our first bubble stitch here um what you do is yarn over now you can work with half doubles or double crochets so let me work with half doubles they're the easiest to uh, make so half double yarn over insert your hook three loops yarn over pull through everything now on the next stitch that is where we're going to put our first bubble bubble stitch yarn over right insert your hook in the next stitch yarn over pull through we have three loops on our hook you're going to yarn over and just pull through the first two that is it and then you're going to yarn over in the same same stitch insert your hook yarn over pull through then you're going to pull through the next two stitches you're going to repeat that five times and in those five times you're going to have six stitches on your hook six stitches on your hook remember that we have one two three four five that means we have we've done four stitches yarn over repeat that pull through the next two you count one two three four five six you're going to have six stitches on your hook now what you do this is not the part where we get to mix the bubble you yarn over and then you're going to pull through everything it's gonna be hard like you're going to ensure you push the bubble outside and then pull tightly enough yarn over go through the next stitch and put your next half double and continue as if nothing 
as if you've just not done nothing like that so you're going to put um maybe two more or three more uh, half doubles depending on what you want if you want them close together it's also possible it just depends with what you really want so you just we're going to make uh, a space of three and then you're going to repeat the same thing now when you uh, after your three stitches you're going to repeat the bubble you yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull through three loops you pull through just the first two and you're going to repeat that motion five times that is one you're going to go five times until you have six stitches on your hook once you have that just remember you'll pull through tightly and then yarn over input normal half doubles so i'll just do those two bubbles and then i will show you what to do with the next uh row so once you get to the end because the bubbles need to be facing one direction what you do now you're just going to put a row of sing of um half doubles all through um the next row the next row after you've done your bubbles what follows is you're going to put a row of half doubles which are going to put you across i'll meet you when i have that so i have my half doubles and then that puts me back on the side where we get to put our bubble stitch so you're just now going to continue with the same same process that we did on our first row with the bubbles that's basically it and the rest is up to you whether you get to have the bubbles follow each other or whether you get to space them up uh, put one bubble at the side then the other one in the middle of this to have them go in different directions and pattern wise then that is just up to you but now this is the basics the rest you just have to let your creativity flow i will show you how to do the alpine stitch for this stitch we're going to be working on our alpine stitch so what you do you're going to chain uh two you're going to put double crochets all through your foundation now to put a double crochet you're going to yarn over insert your hook in both stitches like that yarn over pull through three loops on your hook yarn over and then you're going to pull through the first two and then you're going to have two loops on your hook yarn over once again and then pull through the last two continue making that all the way to the end now with your double crochets all done you're going to chain two to turn your work once you've done that you're going to yarn over and you're going to put half double on the very first stitch you're going to put a half double and half double you yarn over insert your hook in the stitch and over pull through three loops on your hook and pull through everything once you put um half double on the very first stitch what you do is you're going to yarn over twice one and then two once you do that we're going to be making a front post treble crochet front post treble crochet this is what you do with that you're going to insert your hook in between the first stitch and the second here you insert your hook and then at the back it will be like that you're going to push the second stitch out like that that is what you call a front post treble yarn over pull through that stitch you're going to yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the next two and then yarn over and pull through the last two like that now once you have that you're going to yarn over you will skip the stitch that is behind the front post treble that you've made you're going to ensure that you skip that stitch because it's covered by the front post treble that you've done and then you put a half double on the next stitch and then you yarn over twice you skip the stitch uh, that you put a half double on top of and go to the next one insert your hook in between them and pull it upwards like that yarn over 
you pull through yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the next two and yarn over pull through the last two once you have that remember to skip the stitch that is covered by the front post treble this one for me and then you just put in your ha uh, half double then yarn over twice you skip the stitch that is below the half double and you do a front post that yarn over pull through pull through the first two the second two and the third two so that is what you're going to do until you get to the very end i will meet you when we are working on our next row now on the next row you're going to chain one and then uh put single crochets all the way a single crochet insert your hook yarn over two loops yarn over and pull through everything that's what you're going to do now with your row of single crochets done you're going to chain two and turn your work and then what you do is in the spaces between the front trebles that we did that is where we're going to put our next treble so what you do is um the one the spaces that we didn't do a front post treble that's where you're going to do your front post treble now insert your hook like that and repeat and then you put your half double as we did on the last row so you're going to be skipping the front post treble and you're just alternating and because you're alternating then that is what is going to make the alpine stitch that is basically that you alternate and then you put a single crochet row and then you alternate putting the front treble the front post treble crochet so that is it for alpine st alpine stitch um the rest is up to you you get to combine colors however you want and the length all that is up to you and i think i'm going to stick with those ones there's also the what is this called the basket weave i used so many patterns and other patterns i just had to play around with the color this is still the bubble stitch basically that is, I, I used a few patterns but then ended up playing with the patterns and the colors so that is that will be up to you to let your creativity go wild attach all the pieces like this and as you can see i tried to complement all the the colors um we have i i don't know what color this is but i think it's a, a rusty brown here it is we have the orange here it is and then these other ones will be complemented on the full body portion now this is one of the hands now to attach the other hands i had planned out how it's going to look which is like um it will be like this that will be the top and then it will be followed by that and then it will be followed by that as you can see i'm trying to complement this with this and then i, I try to to complement the purple with the whitish here and then the blue will be complemented on the other side now to attach these pieces this is what you're going to do you're going to take um i'll be attaching one side and the other first so or let's just start with the blue and the purple now what you do is you're going to take one of these complementing colors and use them to attach now because this is the one that is in my yarn i am going to take a this one this one is supposed to go with um, with the pitch, so it's the one that we are going to attach now. We have done this method before, and it's what we are going to repeat again now. Remember to ensure that your yarn is long enough after, um, for it to be enough now we're going to start from the end first of all we're going to secure our yarn by passing it through the stitch or something like that and then making a knot at the end to ensure that it's secure and safe we get to the end pull 
make sure that you're leaving just a little bit of it and then you're going to make a knot you'll take these the the side that you, you you're using and then make it like that and pull now once you have that like that, <clears throat> once you have it like that what you're going to do is take the other piece now we'll be alternating you're going to go under remember um if you did your math co correctly you'll remember you'll understand that um the side pieces all of them have the same amount of numbers so they're literally the same size so you're going to insert your hook your yarn from under under like that under the actual package like that and then pull and then you're going to go through the next patch and you're going to go under it as well and then pull ensure that you're pulling tightly so that um the yarn is not that much visible and then you're just going to keep repeating that you're going to insert your hook again your sorry your yarn from below under like that and pull and then under again through the other side through the other patch and pull pull tightly enough because um the best example here is um i used orange the best compliment here is i used orange on the rusty brown so it's not that much visible so that's why you need to pull it tightly enough and then you're going to go on the other side you're still going to go under and then pull then pull tightly enough once more you're going to go under again pull tightly enough that is what you're going to keep repeating until you've secured the whole of it so remember when you're using for example we're using this green and the peach and i opted to take the green yarn and say you're going to be attaching um, the blue and the purple you can choose now one of these colors so that they complement each other like I said I used purple on the peach and the purple and then I used black on the rusty brown and black that way your work is not going to look too messy it's going to be neat so that is what you're going to do until you've attached all the pieces afterwards this is what you're going to have at the end of it all because remember when we started we made two pieces for each uh, portion we have uh, 12 six pieces one two three we have six pieces for our hand portion which means we have two 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 so you're going to um match them the way you wish and then you're going to move forward from there on so i will meet you when i have attached all my pieces and remember this is what you're going to do for every portion every patch this is what you're going to do including the body portion including everything now i will see you when we have our complete um patch sort of patched and then we can continue from there okay time to work on our rim so i will be using the color red and i know it's not visible well on the camera but um because i'm making his item for a client i will have to use it <laughs> because um i wanted to use color red because it's the color that i haven't used most on all the pieces so let's work on our rim now first things first we're going to be cleaning off these edges and ensure that the number of stitches that you had when you were making all the pieces you if you had 20 pieces when you made the this side piece and then the other the 20 pieces 20 stitches on the other side it means that when you're cleaning off you should have a total of 40 
stitches so that's what you're going to do and you're going to be adding a row of single crochets all the way around so we're going to start from the corner here this is where we're going to start insert your hook in the very very stitch that you want any stitch that you want take your yarn take your yarn pull it through chain one to secure once you've chained one to secure pull it tightly enough and then we're going to add a single crochet in the same same stitch you add your single crochet like that and a single crochet i think i've already showed you is you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through now that is what you're going to continue doing and um the trick that i used with mine is i ensured the side with stitches is the side that is at the bottom that way i'm not going to have any trouble with um making my my rim and making the rim portion of the the full body now just continue adding your single crochets all the way around your project and i will meet you here and this is how we attach the same same way we've always been attaching that is if you you are a regular of my videos now let me repeat that we're working now on the last stitch it's the last stitch that we're putting our stitch in so the usual insert here and over pull through but now what you don't do is you're not going to pull through you're not going to yarn over and pull through everything. What you're going to do with your two stitches still on the loop, you're going to insert in the very first stitch that you made. Again, apologies for how blurry the red color is. And then once you've inserted in the very first stitch, you're going to yarn over and pull through that very stitch. And then the two loops on your hook once again and chain one that is going to count as your first chain when we start going when we start making stitches for the rim now to make the rim i am going to measure my arm length and see how many inches i have and see how many i need to add so i have 17 inches and i need a total of 22 so which means i need one two three four five around six inches so what you're going to do is you count as you go and you're going to first of all start with 20 stitches and the stitches you just yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through and that is what you're going to continue doing or until you have the length that you so much desire I will meet you right back when I have my number and then I'll tell you how many I have. I have a total of 25 stitches and I did 25 because I need to counter for shrinkage because this is such a tight stitch. It's bound to shrink. Now, a slip stitch. This is what you do. You're going to, if you already haven't chained an extra stitch, that is what you need to do. That is going to counter for your turning stitch. Now chain one and then turn. We're going to be working on the back, back loops. The back, back loops. So you're going to ignore the first stitch and go into the next stitch that is there. You're going to insert your hook in that single loop that you can see at the back. Now yarn over, pull through everything you go to the next one you insert it there yarn over pull through everything yarn insert it there yarn over pull through everything now that is what you're going to keep doing because you're going to be using slip stitches to ensure that our hand is cinched at the bottom because i honestly hate when a hand is so baggy on my wrist i love it tight and cozy especially during cold weather so that is what i'm giving my client and um, hopefully the the hand is going to go way above the wrist point because it would look so chic if it was up to here so um, that is why i had to add 
more chains now one last time you're going to insert your hook at the very back stitch the one that looks like a one laying like that you insert it there yarn over pull through everything and that is how you make a slip stitch which i am sure i already showed you earlier on so you're going to continue like that until we get here and i will meet you right back here to show you how to transition to the next row now once you get to the last stitch and i will need you to ensure that you keeping count of your stitches because if you don't you're going to have um a wave kind of edge now you get to the end what you're going to do after you put your last slip stitch you're going to insert your hook in both loops of the next available stitch like that again really sorry about the red now yarn over and pull through and make a slip stitch pull through everything like that and then in the next available stitch which is this one insert your hook yarn over and pull through everything now after you get to your last stitch you're going to put two slip stitch slip stitches in the next two stitches now turn your work you're going to skip those two stitches that you've just made and one two those are two stitches and on the third one you're going to go through the back loop we've already talked about the back loop is the stitch farthest from you the stitch on this side now insert your hook yarn over and pull through and those that is the back loop stitch that is what is going to cause the ribbing so you're going to keep uh, putting your slip stitches through the back loops only you get to the end you're going to repeat the same thing you chain one turn your work put back loop stitches all the way to the end when you get to the end you're going to put two slip stitches in the next two available stitches then turn your work skip those two stitches and then continue putting your um, slip stitches in the back loop all the way around your project and I'm going to meet you at the end here uh, don't hesitate to ask questions or go to my other videos and see whether you can understand from there this is the hand that we were working on and before I take on my next yarn and just continue it's still red i just ran out uh when you get to the end you're going to connect the same same way that we connected these other pieces um that is how we're going to connect don't forget that now before we before i go finish off this one i want to show you how we're going to do the bottom now um the bottom we're going to still do the same same thing that we did here we're going to first of all go in with a single crochet row to even out everything that we have although the way i made my um designs designs yeah my patterns i ensured that the parts at the bottom are easy to go into uh they're basically like little stitches stitches that you can go into so but yes i will be going in with a row of single crochets like i did here you go in with your row and you're going to be doing the same same pattern here um you can either do the single crochet or you can do um a slip stitch so this is the slip stitch but i am leaning on towards having a single crochet um what are these called a single crochet rim at the bottom to ensure that it doesn't scrunch up quite inside and probably maintains these um the shape that we have here so um a single crochet we already know how to do that because i did show you earlier on in the video and um well go on ahead put in your single crochet rows first of all and then i'm going to be making five inches here and i will meet you when i am done with this because well we're just repeating this instead of slip stitches we are just going to do single crochet from here all the way to the other side here 
I'll meet you here so that now we can make our neck portion or the finishing touches. Don't mind this. I ran out of the red yarn and I needed to use it to attach here, but I will be doing that in a few. So um, I'll meet you back when I have my five rim inches of single crochet rows. Um, they'll be like this, but in red. And then we're going to work on the side portion, this this side and our neck portion it will be all connected so i will see you in a few so now we have everything completely done and attached what we have to do um don't mind this one it's like i said play around with your yarn and just let your creativity flow and this is what my creativity told me now what you're going to do is you're going to put on final touches on um hmm between our two panels we are going i'm going to be putting a rows a row of single crochet um just a few rolls from the tip here all round round the neck and then all the way to here i will be repeating that a few times probably like one or two each inches because i want um i want it to be like a collar somehow and because I already showed you how to um, make single crochet rows, I will meet you back with all, um, with the full project done. And I will meet you with my complete cardigan. Bye! Final product, um, the beige thing around the neck is what I was talking about and this was a client's order so I literally ran out of time before I could film the process that is why I hastened it up but if I get to repeat such a project then I will have it in more details thank you for watching bye